Yasuke, or Yasuke, was a man of African origin who served as retainer to Japanese daimyo Odo Nobunaga for a period of 15 months between 1581 and 1582 during the Sengoku period of Japan or Warring States period until Nobunaga's death in the Hanonoji incident. There are just a few recordings of him in history and much speculation with some evidence, but the fact is there was a black man present in the setting of the most pivotal time in Japanese history. This is the story and an example shown to us in the dealings of race, caste, class, and placism. Yasuke in Japan, August 17th, 1579 to June 21st, 1582. Current Japan, Sengoku period. Japan was at civil war on top of civil war. It was known as the Warring States period or country at war, the Sengoku period. China had become unified in 221 BCE and Japan still had not done this, nor Africa. Thus, the war was named after this, the Warring States period. But who would rule was the question. There were records of battles of over 150,000 men. At this time, everyone in the East was under China because China controlled trade. In many Eastern languages, China is called the Central Kingdom or something alike. China was the high society and all of other Eastern societies beneath, even Japan. And all trade came from China. A reading from Thomas Lockley on the incident that made things worse. As civil war shook the Japanese islands just who the government was became increasingly unclear in the early 16th century. Two noble Japanese families arrived in China claiming the status, and the Chinese agreed to trade only with one of them, the Hasekawa. Those left out the Ochi were enraged and started a violent rampage in Chinese port of Ningbo, killing locals and plundering property. The Chinese weren't surprisingly not pleased with a foreign conflict spilling over into their own soil and demanded the perpetrators be delivered to them for justice. With no government in Japan able to enforce the Chinese request, nothing happened and eventually the Chinese cut both trade and diplomatic ties with all of Japan. Japanese people were henceforth forbidden to enter Chinese territory on pain of death and Chinese merchants would suffer the same penalty if they traded with Japan. China's allies in Korea also tightened trade relations and restricted Japanese traders to one port, Busan, in the southeast. Products that had previously been from China, either from China itself or traded through Chinese ports with destinations as far away as Africa, became hard to come by in Japan. Korean trade also dropped dramatically. Products which became scarce ranged from luxuries such as silk, tiger skins, art, oaks, ivory, and sugar to necessities such as coins, medicine, and tea. There were two solutions to this problem, piracy and finding other sources of trade. So the need and want for outside things grew. Enter the Catholics and the Europeans aiming at the Eastern world. Now remember, Portugal and Spain kicked the Moors out fully in 1491, and then after, they and the Dutch began to explore the world, almost like they found maps of the world somewhere. The first affiliation between Portugal and Japan started in 1543, when Portuguese explorers landed in southern Japan, becoming the first Europeans to reach Japan. As soon as the first Portuguese arrived in 1543, Portuguese traders and merchants began looking for trading opportunities in Japan. This period of time is often entitled Nanban trade, where both Europeans and Japanese would engage in mercantilism and cultural exchange. The Portuguese at this time would found the port of Nagasaki. Because Japan was in the midst of a civil war called the Sengoku period, the Japanese bought many Portuguese artillery such as guns and cannons. Oda Nobunaga made extensive use of guns, playing a key role in the Battle of Nagashino. Within a year, Japanese smiths were able to reproduce the mechanism of began to meet. Uh, excuse me. Within a year, Japanese smiths were able to reproduce the mechanism and began to mass produce the Portuguese arms. Early issue dates of Japanese inexperience were corrected with the help of Portuguese blacksmiths. Pause. Now, what he's saying right here is. The Japanese at first did not have guns. They got guns from the Europeans 
and then instead of just keep buying them and buying them in their cannons, they learned how to make guns, and they even employed other Europeans who sold out and taught them how to make guns. That's one issue with Africa that never happened. It We did reproduce in some areas, people reproduced like small cannons and guns, but never in mass production, never was it the norm to actually start manufacturing weapons. That was one of the biggest mistakes and still is to this day, lack of manufacturing um, and just all around advancement. Just a historical note, unpause. After the Portuguese first made contact with the Japanese in 1543, Japanese slaves were sold to the Portuguese and sent to various locations overseas, including Portugal itself throughout the 16th and 17th centuries. Documents mention the slave trade along with protests against the enslavement of Japanese initially issued by King Sebastian of Portugal to the Damayo of Japan to stop the enslavement and transportation of the Japanese. Hundreds of Japanese, especially women, were sold as slaves. Japanese slaves are believed to be the first of their nation to end up in Europe, and the Portuguese purchased Japanese to bring to Portugal for sexual purposes, as noted by the church in 1515. King Sebastian feared that it was having a negative effect on trade between the countries and Catholic evangelization since the slave trade in Japan was growing to large proportions, so he commanded that it be banned in 1571. Japanese slave women were even sold as concubines serving on Japanese ships and trading in Japan, mentioned by Louis Sicaria a Portuguese Jesuit, in a 1598 document. Japanese slaves were brought by the Portuguese to Macul, where some of them not only ended up being enslaved by the Portuguese, but also slaves to other slaves, with the Portuguese owning many Malay and African slaves who in turn owned Japanese slaves of their own. In 1595, a law was passed by Portugal banning the selling and buying of Chinese and Japanese slaves. Toyotomi Hideyoshi, was so disgusted by his own Japanese people were being sold en masse into slavery in Kyoshu that he wrote a letter to Jesuit Vice Provincial Gaspar Kelohu in July 24, 1587 and demanded the, the Portuguese, Thai, and Cambodians stop purchasing Japanese slaves and return those who ended up as far as India. Toyotomi Hideyoshi blamed the Portuguese and Jesuits for this slave trade. More on this later. Pause. Readers know. Now here we have a uh, example of the Japanese being sold into slaves. So never think that just because Africans, black people were slaves, everybody was slaves at one time, as Elon Musk stated, maybe except for the Dutch. But um, here's a clear example of people who were downtrodden. You think of the Japanese as this high society and all of this, and highly technologically advanced. They had beautiful culture back then, but they were considered barbarians and savages by the Chinese and a lot of other people. Um, they slave traded their own, they sold their daughters and their children. It was bad. It was bad. Um, but look, they sh got shaped up, got out of it, and rose. Got smacked down and rose back up again. So don't ever think that uh, we can't do the same. Here's a clear example. Unpause. Reader's note. So the Portuguese are aiming at the east, and now they set their eyes on Japan. And they need a man to handle the situation and get their trade routes together. Um, they came in the vise, of course, uh, you know, we're bringing Christianity, goodwill towards men, yada, 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 and the one true living God. But secretively, uh, the Portuguese Europeans wanted to just gain control of the uh, trade industry and take over and get their influence um, the same way they wanted to do and did do in Africa. So enter their man, Alessandro Valeganano. In comes Alessandro Valeganano. Born February 1539, died in January 20th, 1606. He was an Italian Jesuit missionary who helped introduce Christianity to the Far East, especially to Japan. Born into an influential Italian family and educated for the law, Villaginano joined the Society of Jesus in 1566 after undergoing a religious experience. In 1573, the Society appointed him to the Far East to help supervise the growth of its missions there. He arrived in Portuguese India in 1574 and spent most of the rest of his life in the service 
of missions to Gao, India, Maku off the China coast and in Japan. Among the missionaries he helped to prepare for work in China was the Italian Jesuit Matteo Ricci, who was responsible for the tremendous influence of Catholicism on the Chinese court in the 17th century. It was in Japan, however, that Villiganano made his major contribution to the progenation of Christianity, and on his first visit, he arranged for the Jesuit mission to receive a portion of the highly profitable silk trade between Japan and Maku. In this way, he not only made his mission self-supporting, but also was able to convert several other Japanese daimos, hereditary feudal lords, who also helped to share in the trade. Villiganano's work was, had a tremendous influence. By the time of his death, there were an estimated 300,000 Christians and 116 Jesuits in the country. At some point, he acquires Yasuke.